Hi, I'm Matt, and I'm wondering, is there more to the pop culture stories than what we've been told? Is Nicolas Cage actually a vampire? Is Paul McCartney really a replacement? And did Stanley Kubrick fake the moon landing and subsequently leave us clue after clue in his film? For one reason or another, we cannot get enough of celebrities. Whether it's Benifer, Brangelina, Kimye, or Zanessa, I had to start Googling these. Our obsession with celebrity causes us to make these folks larger than life and capable of incredible and sometimes miraculous feats. These stories can range from the fun and harmless to the absolutely downright dangerous, as you'll see today. And while we go down the list, please keep in mind that these are theories that at least some people actually believe. From the beginning of his career, Nicolas Cage has been known for a peculiarity, so to speak. Is he a good actor? Is he a bad actor? The scholars have been trying to figure it out for decades. And things only got more mysterious when in 2011, a Seattle-based antiques dealer posted a photograph for sale on eBay. Jack Moore listed the photo as one of a man from Bristol, Tennessee around 1870, though he also claimed it could be no one other than Nicolas Cage himself. Mord insists that Nicolas Cage is a vampire, saying, Personally, I believe it's him and that he is some sort of walking undead vampire who quickens or reinvents himself once every 75 years or so. One Reddit user found more evidence of Nicolas Cage's possible immortality, an image of 19th century Mexican Emperor Maximilian I in a Mexican history textbook. However, considering that the man in the Civil War photograph and Emperor Max were alive at the same time period, it's kind of unlikely that they could both be Nicolas Cage reincarnate. One major issue with Mord's theory, according to vampire experts, vampires cannot be photographed. In an interview, Nick Cage said that he can see himself in a mirror and doesn't drink blood, so... There you go. Does Why don't we just keep it a mystery? It might be a lot more fun for, for everybody if I just say it's possible. <laughs> All right, listen. Some people believe the moon landing is fake. While there's a lot to unpack there, one of the most interesting sub-conspiracies about the moon landing having been faked leads to one of the most celebrated film directors of all time, Stanley freaking Kubrick. It started simply with the question, if the moon landing was faked, who could have possibly staged it? Some theorists think that it was Kubrick who actually staged, directed, and filmed the moon landing in order to help out NASA. The theory stems from his 1968 film, 2001 A Space Odyssey, which showed that at the time, a realistic space-like set could be filmed on a soundstage with existing technology. The story goes that Kubrick spent 18 months working on footage for Apollo 11 and 12 moon missions on a soundstage. In somewhat of a greatest hits tour for conspiracy theorists, some believe that the soundstage was located at Area 51. Essentially, the theory is served by the idea that there are many inconsistencies in the famous moon landing footage, such as who shot the footage from outside the spaceship, how was the flag waving, and what's the deal with the shadows. These questions have often led theorists to believe that Kubrick was actually hired by the US government. But what were his motives? Money? Blackmail? The sheer freaking thrill of it all? The theory deepens as some believe that there are many intentionally placed clues in Kubrick's 1980 horror classic, The Shining, which serve as Kubrick's own admission. The theory is explored in the 2012 documentary Room 237, which examines the clues in The Shining, which some believe point to Kubrick admitting his part in the moon landing. Kubrick died before the theory really took off and thus never commented on it, but the theory has been refuted by his own daughter, as well as, of course, NASA. Okay, so I was kind of on the fence about whether to cover this theory or not. While I don't want to perpetuate it, I do want to talk about how incredibly offensive this theory is. Some conspiracy theorists have long suspected that musician Stevie Wonder is not blind, and they claim that they have more than enough evidence to prove such. In 2016, theorists were back on the case when Wonder was shown fumbling with an envelope while presenting at the Grammys. According to skeptics in this incident, some claim that Wonder was only able to successfully open the envelope after looking down at it. In 2017, rumors formed again after a TMZ video showed Wonder saying he had flown and landed a plane successfully, and that in the future he would, quote, reveal the truth. But why fake blindness? Some believe that it is nothing more than a PR stunt or a little joke that Wonder has been pulling on his fans for decades. Apparently, NBA icon Shaquille O'Neal is also a believer of this conspiracy theory. Musician Lionel Richie and actor Anthony Anderson have also claimed to believe in Wonder's ability to see in separate interviews. While it might seem harmless, I think that why this conspiracy theory persists can be attributed to outright ableism. What I think the issue is here is that for people with sight, it's so mind-boggling that someone without sight could not only be a fully functioning member of society, but so incredibly talented and successful on top of that. It seems like it's coming from straight up insecurity. Taking it all in stride though, Wonder has acknowledged and poked fun at the theory with jokes like pretending to read a results card at the Grammys or pretending to drive on James Corden's carpool karaoke. 
The Paul is Dead craze started in 1969 when the Detroit DJ Russ Gibb was the host of a show on WKNR. On October 12, 1969, an anonymous call requested that Gibb put on the Beatles' White Album and spin the intro to Revolution 9 backwards. Gibb did as requested and while listening to the record backwards, heard the words, quote, turn me on, dead man. After continuing to play the album backwards, he heard John say, quote, I buried Paul at the end of Strawberry Fields Forever. This sparked rumors and conspiracies that Paul was dead and that the Beatles were hiding a secret. The theory posits that McCartney died in a car crash in 1966 and that the Beatles replaced him with a fake Paul. Fans scoured the Beatles albums to prove this theory, which was quickly spreading. Two days after the broadcast on WKNR, the Michigan Daily reported that the album cover for Abbey Road represented a funeral procession. The theory also suggested that in the future releases, the Beatles would continue to drop hints about Paul's death and the switcheroo. According to the theory, Paul's replacement was actually very talented himself, writing both Hey Jude and Blackbird, which is... Very lucky, to be honest. It would appear that neither John Lennon or Paul McCartney himself appreciated the rumor. John would call the radio station on October 16th, telling him, quote, it's the most stupid rumor I've ever heard. At the time the theory blew up, Paul was living in his secluded Scottish farm with his family. He was not entertained by the theory or the surrounding media frenzy, but eventually took it in stride, realizing how good the publicity from it would be. Nobody seriously believed the theory by 1970. However, the story remained and still remains widely popular. Similarly to the Paul is Dead theory, some believe that the Avril Lavigne we know today is not the same Avril Lavigne who rocked our socks off in the early 2000s. While it's hard to pin down where exactly the theory originated, it can at least be dated back to a blog post from 2011. The theory goes that Avril Lavigne killed herself in 2003 after the death of her grandfather and at the peak of her emo pop popularity. Lavigne's recording company, rather than face the facts, replaced her with a doppelganger named Melissa Vandella, who at the time was reportedly working as a stand-in for Levine for paparazzi. Vandella would then go on to record Under My Skin, so the theory goes, and the record even left clues as to what really happened. There's also reportedly proof that Levine was replaced via her changing handwriting and face. Despite a disclaimer by the 2011 blog post author, which explains that the post was created to show how conspiracies can look true, the theory still took off. Since its inception, more evidence has been supplied to support the theory, including deep fixations on changes in her appearance as well as in her music. Other proof includes the fact that 2003 and younger Levine wore pants, while current Levine wears skirts. If I didn't know better, I'd say she just grew up and changed her style preferences. Most theorists point to a strange photo shoot in which Levine takes photos with the name Melissa written on her hand in permanent marker. While odd, if the record executives were trying to keep this whole thing a secret, that would have been a big old goof. Lucky for us, Levine addressed the rumors in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, calling it, quote, a dumb internet rumor. While it might seem complicated, if you believe this theory is a bunch of baloney, I'm with you. Those are uh, Avril Levine songs. I don't know if anyone gets that. While some of these theories might seem fun and harmless, for the persons involved, having misinformation and lies spread about you can be really emotionally distressing. And the line between fun and harmless and harmful and dangerous can so quickly be crossed. So the next time you're interested in spreading rumors and conspiracy theories like this, just imagine them as people, how they'd be affected and reconsider.